My name is Helena Bienep. Everybody calls me Hilu. I've been in recovery for a little over 10 and a half years now. The final time for me was the final person in my family said, let me help you change your life and allowed me to come with my sister. She was the catalyst and after many tries, everybody. And what happened for me was she realized my use and said, I love you, but I've come to realize you may die from this disease. And I've come to have to accept that. But if you bring in this insanity to me and my family here, I can't, I can't do what I was doing before. And I had just taken some money from her that day when she was saying that. And I had every plan of going to whatever I need to go to. And she told me, no, at that point, I needed a place to go. And I went into treatment. I didn't know what to do. I said, I need help, which is a place I've been to many times, many, many, many times. But when I went into this treatment, there was a peer in there. And I wanted to leave every day from this treatment I entered. And he said to me, you know what? You can leave anytime you want. But for the next 28 days, I remember this. He said, don't do anything you want to do and try to do everything you don't want to do. Just for the next 28 days, no matter what, I'm here. And I remember that. I said, okay, I can try to do this up to two weeks. I can go. But I took it a day at a time and something clicked, you know, for the first time I heard it in that way. Feeling of care for or what I wanted was important. And to say, as long as you do what you need to do, and if it is not harming me, I'm here for you. Meaning I'm not going to tell you what to do. And then the suggestion versus telling me what to do. Give it a try. What's you got to lose? And that's, I never looked back. I quit smoking cigarettes that same day. And it was an experience that um, has changed my life. Um, because my previous, before entering recovery, was all the insanity of addiction and use of substances and incarceration and all that. So there have been many attempts, but I kept walking toward the substances. Didn't know how that happened. So entering into treatment and coming to a place of willingness, being able to get the support changed my life. There was stigma, definitely, and I realized more about it later because subconsciously the stigma that I was experiencing, I owned it because it was so labeled, especially from the criminal justice system and um, cultural stigmas about the shame that it brought onto the family and my culture. I'm from Ethiopia and there was a thing about not talking about it. So it kept me from that, from getting treatment, getting help. The labels just blocked every opportunity to treatment. And I had started to own those labels. And then I was faced with that, the same thing with my parole officer from people in the community. I told all this time, he never changed, you're never gonna change. And that stigma, that hardest, that time, of not acceptance drove me for another 10 years of insanity. So I try to pass on the people. I know you want to get out of the detention center and you want to go, you know, you're going to do what you want to do. Take it a step at a time. You don't have to do this alone. I'm not going to judge you. My process is not your process. Your process is your process. How can I support you be able to be well today? You know? Keep the judgment away and just say, what is it that I can help you with? You did, you know, you need to lay your head down. Okay. Need some food. There are some places. Let's get, you know, so to keep the stigma and the shame, you're a person. What is it? If you could have things your way for the next four years, in the next four years, what would it be changed? And how do we start working on that? I just want to keep you alive because shame and stigma 
is the biggest barrier to somebody getting any type of help. And mark a shame, don't put that on any person. My name is Hilu Biena, and I'm thankful for their gift of recovery, and I will not be stopped by stigma.